Hey, how are you guys doing today? Uh, this is Red Eye Jedi here. Uh, first off, if you can, as you can hear, I got some music playing in the background this time. Um, just because I'm going over Julia, the programming language, um, it can be a little stressful to some people. You know, so maybe the music will help. Um, anyways, so this is a tool that I, I was talking about. We used in the beta competition, the private beta competition. Um, a couple of the guys introduced this, brought it out. It was a cool little uh, thing. It's not necessary to use, um, but it, it, it did help find swaps. Now, and I really didn't find anything that to swap with at the time. Um, I was doing it on my own, just kind of going one by one, figuring out what worked the best, stuck with a few pairs. Um, you know, and it did me pretty well. I mean, I got 18th place. It wasn't, you know, I didn't get the, the number one spot or anything, but I still did pretty good out of 300. So, anyways, you're going to go to Google and type in Julia or you could also go to julialang.org I will throw the link down in the description for you um, so you're gonna go there to the website once you're here on the website you will see this little green box that says download go ahead and click on that box it'll take you to this page here um, basically just click on the one needed for your computer you got a Mac you want this one if you got Windows then you're gonna want either the 64-bit or 32-bit you know you got a newer computer or an old computer um, other than that there's other ones I go with the Windows don't go portable I, I don't know about doing the portable I haven't tried that one yet I've only done the installer. Um, portable means you don't have to install it. You could keep it on a USB drive. You plug it into your USB drive and you could activate the file there um, or wherever you put it. It's not necessary. It doesn't need to be installed. This one, I mean, the installer doesn't really put anything in the computer except for the files needed. Um, so once you install it, or I mean, not install, but once you download it, open it up it'll bring you here you're gonna to want to hit browse all right and then we're gonna go all the way up to where it shows your user click on that and hit OK and then click next I'm not gonna do that just because I already have it installed um, after you hit next it will install it and then it will ask you if you like to run the program do not run the program because we are not ready for the program. All right. So I'll just go ahead and let me cancel that out. Now, once it is installed, you're going to want to do a couple of things. I will have a file with a link down below for um, Dropbox. And let me get to my folder here. And delete this so it doesn't confuse things later now here first I'll show you how I even got to where I am now you'll open up your um, your folder on the bottom or whatever for Windows and you're gonna see your C drive you're gonna go in there and go to users the name of your profile and then you're gonna find Julia now I have two because this is what the app uses and this is the application itself. So I would go in here. Your, oh, let me s state something. Um, mine says Julia-153-Win64. Yours might not say that. Yours might just say Julia-153, all right? If it doesn't say Win64, don't worry about it. Um, anyways, you're gonna go in there uh, now the file I was talking about for Dropbox will be this one right here called swap finder dash copy dot TX um, the reason why it's I put the copy in there is because this is the one that we're gonna be editing and then we're gonna drop it over into Julia alright 
Now I'm going to open this up and give you a little rundown real quick. This right here is the language that runs Julia or what Julia reads, right? Right here, you see there's Y flare, Y thin, USD, XRP, CEL. This all right here, let me do something for you real quick. We will throw that there. I'll open this up. So just as one quick example, right here, like I think this is like dictation or dictionary or whatever, right? You're starting under Y flare. So we're gonna put this under Y flare. And then right after that, you see Y fin. Change the Y fin there. Now, if you notice, there's a price right here. That price goes right here. If you see, I already copied and pasted this. Um, I was doing a rundown video real quick and then my cat decided to help me out. So. I started over. <laughs> um, anyway, so you just copy, uh, you'll paste that here, and then you'll go into the next one. So it'd be like USD, you'd put USD down here, and the value changed. You copy, you'll paste that in there. XRP, same thing. And then once you're done with that line, you'll see this whole new line where it says USD equals, and then you have the dict again, right? So what that means is you're going to change this to USD and then the first one is CEL. So you go CEL, copy, and then you'll highlight here. I'll go ahead and do that for you right now. I'll just copy. And then USD, CEL, paste that there. Now you see how my thing dropped down. I just go up here and hit delete. Um, and bring it back up. So basically you want your number right next to the arrow. Okay, right here. You want the number right next to the arrow. You don't want any spaces. But anyway, so you paste it, you keep doing that. Um, it's fun for a minute. You just paste all those numbers as needed. Once you're done there, you would hit save. And then we'll go ahead and open up our folder where it was so this is the file we saved now that we saved it we're gonna copy you could either use the mouse and copy it or you could also use hotkeys which always help which is control c for copy and control v for paste on uh windows for mac good luck <laughs> sorry i don't know i don't know uh max so anyways now that i'm in here you're gonna to wanna to paste that text file we made. So I'm gonna do Control V, and you see it through Swap Finder down here. Now what I'm gonna do is change the name. I'm gonna get rid of that copy.txt, and I'm gonna type in .jl. So it says Swap Finder.jl. Once I'm done, enter. Yes, I want to change it. Now it's a Julia language file, okay? That is why I keep a copy over here because this one you will always edit and then you'll paste it over into the bin and change it. So you're gonna wanna delete the swap finder each time and you do this just because otherwise when you go and try to paste another one it'll end up adding a two at the end and you won't be able to it'll make it harder for you to find the information you need right so now that we're done here I hope this isn't overwhelming <laughs> um, now on Windows I would go down to the bottom into the search bar and type in CMD for the command prop and hit enter now you see it shows my C drive and what profile it's under right now, right? So we're gonna, in here we're gonna hit CD backslash enter. Now, basically it just means you are looking in the C drive. We're gonna go back into the bin folder, okay? I hope you didn't close this. 
we're inside the Julia bin file folder and you're gonna click up in this top bar I always click away so I don't mess anything up right and see how it's all lit up now I'm gonna control C oops whatever control C copy it go back over here now you're gonna hit CD backslash control V all right then I'm going to use my arrow buttons on the keyboard to scroll all the way over to under users. And then I'm going to hit backspace, backspace, backspace. Enter. Now, in the command prompt, we are looking inside the Julia bin folder. Okay. Now, to activate the file that we just made, we're going to type in Julia space swap finder dot JL space one enter and here you go everything populated now I didn't go and change all the values so just know these numbers are kind of skewed um, right here uh, the, if you were to have Y flare and change it to XRP and then into CEL and then back in the Y flare, that's what this all means. You're not really going to get much of a, a profit with gas fees, everything. You're not going to make anything, maybe even lose a little money, right? But then if these values were all correct, you see Y flare to CEL, Y fin, Y flare with this eight. That means in... Oh, look at this one down here. This one's even better. XRP, Y fin, Y flare, XRP. Meaning, let me throw this over here, and I want this over here. So I'm going off of this one here. That means to you will make a huge profit if you were to have your money in XRP. And then you swap it in the Y fin. And then after you swap it in the Y fin, you're going to have the Y fin up here. And then the YFLR, you'll swap again. And then you'll have the YFLR into, back into FXRP. And it will give you this much more profit. Now, I think this is just, I don't know um, if this is percentages or if this is the actual value you would get. I, we can't test that right now um, just because I didn't update all the numbers. But it just gives you an idea. So if you saw this literally, you would want to make these swaps. You'd want to have your, you'd want to put your money into FXRP and then a YFIN to YFLARE to XRP. Um, so if you already just holding a YFIN, you're going to want to just get that Y fin, put it in the Y flare, and then a XRP. And then you just go back to buying Y fin to Y flare to XRP. And you can keep doing that circle and boosting your values a lot. Um, but you got to keep an eye on the numbers when you're doing it because the values change and in the middle of swapping, uh, the values can change so much that you end up losing money. So Notepad is always a very handy tool to have. Um, bring this down a little. This is a very t uh, handy tool, Notepad. This way, when you're making your swaps, if you go and say you get one Y flare, and then you have this you can go and paste that value in here so when you make your rounds the second time you can see if it's still the right value and what I do if I look and I go oh shoot there's a loss I backtrack so if I have Y flare and I'm getting ready to throw it in the FXRP but I see the value is lower I'm like ho 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 okay so we're gonna get that Y flare and we're gonna go throw it back in the Y fin because that's where it came from and I will wait until the next trade or I'll go just straight over um, it just depends on what you're trying to do 